So now the Snyder Cut has been out for a while, and I think we can say it's been a huge success by most standards. There's still some divisions among critics, but it got a much, much better rating than the 2017 Justice League. So by that standard, it's done fairly well, but there are still some skeptics like John Campia, who still argue that, well, it's no Avengers, and so this isn't much of an improvement from the 2017 film. And he still maintains that Joss did save Justice League. Uh, we'll get into Joss in another time, but let's try to address some skeptics who are on the fence. Well, let's address that whole Avengers issue. Well, it turns out the actual person who did this story for Avengers endorsed Zack's version. So Penn, who did the story for Avengers, I'm going to be careful, he didn't do the script, he did the story, but he's done quite a few big budget films and he endorsed the Zack version. So he's done some work which is a little bit more problematic, like The Last Stand, but Overall, he has a pretty good CV, and he says this was a really great film. And this is a Marvel writer. So the whole, well, you know, if you're a Marvel fan, I don't know if you can get into this because it's, you know, the usual Zack Darkness stuff. No, no. Even people who do MCU stuff say, no, this was pretty good. So that issue that Campio raises is not a really strong one. But there are other issues in terms of, well, did we really get much more? I mean, yes, we have more hours of footage. I don't know. I think that's being a little too strong in terms of the negativity. I mean, Steppenwolf looks a lot, lot better. I would agree Darkseid looks still a little problematic, but again, that's just the limits of CGI. I mean, any version of Darkseid was going to be disappointing because he's such a powerful, majestic figure. But I do think we got the feeling of an epic, not just in terms of the scale or scope. Right, we just spend much, much more time with the characters and why they're joining the Justice League and why they have to work together, as well as some powers we don't see in 2017. The 2017 version, we did see some impressive things with the Flash, but here he's finally doing time travel, which they hinted at with BVS. So they are doing some new things that we never got with the 2017 version. I also think people are going a little overboard with this whole darkness aspect, because even critics of the film do acknowledge there's actually a lot of joking in this film. There's a lot of humor. Um, admittedly, it's a kind of Zack humor, but it, it does have a lot of humorous moments. I also think people are just sort of mischaracterizing Zack. He can be a much more playful, kind of humorous person if you really look at his work, as well as how he is off stage. Because during the infamous stream that uh, Geeks and Gamers and Jeremy are complaining about, they actually did poke fun at Campia. But as you can see, when they did it, it's very joyful. They're not really being, you know, antagonistic or even trying to have revenge on him they're just they're just playing around in my circle you know just having you guys beating the drums um you know has been really I've, I've had a lot of big smiles on my face you know sitting at 5 a.m with my phone you know in on my sofa going like these guys are <laughs> crazy and <laughs> it's awesome um so i thank you for that i do appreciate it um yeah. <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been a um quite a journey but like i gotta say because like i get up at 4 30 and so like i'm up there you know and i like i get my you know i get my coffee and i get my do my little morning routine and then i like to you know every now and then well every day I, you know i'll spend like 20 minutes just kind of look see what's happening and I'll come across a video or I'll go check a channel and see like, you know, <laughs> some debate or some point of view that feels like I'm like, these guys, they're not giving an F about what you think because they got, I don't know, it's been cool. So I just want to say thanks. It, it, it was weird because like when you did your uh, director's cut event on, at your uh, art college, uh, your art school, and then a lot of fans met you and you were like, yeah, uh, you, you watch channels on YouTube? And we were like, Zach watches our channels? Like, what the hell? And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You, you know, you're, um, you're, you're a creator. Uh, we thought we, he doesn't have time for YouTube. Oh, yeah. yeah. There, there, there was one point where Zach actually said, like, I think you were talking about something and you pointed. I was sitting next to Chris Wong Swenson, Ping Pong Flicks. And he was like, like, those guys right there. I know those guys. And we and Chris looked at each other like, what? <laughs> you brought, what you, what you at us? What the? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was so what uh, do we do? Yeah. Like, wait. Who's <laughs> watching our shit? What? Yeah. That's how it was when I told when I told Film Gob that uh, that Zach liked his his five minutes of 
of Campia being wrong. Oh. The film god was like, huh? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I'm being serious. It's like, oh, shit. Speaking of, like, forget about release the Snyder Cut. We've got that. Let's release the John Campia being wrong cut. I've heard the assembly footage is over three days long. On that <laughs> one, so. Three days. That must be the edited one. Film God is just smiling. I mean, Zach is smiling. They're just having fun with it. I mean, again, I think people are overstressing the seriousness and the seriousness of tone, which is definitely there with this new version. But there's also a very light, kind of optimistic, kind of very bright aspect to this whole thing. And again, if you can't see that, that's fine. But I would forewarn people that there's a kind of polarization. I, it's not so much that the MCU movie does all this bright, fluffy stuff. And Zach does the dark stuff. It's the, it's just much more mature, much more sophisticated, much more adult. Again, I'm not a fan of when he does that all the time. I'm I'm, not, I'm kind of very, very mixed on Watchmen because I prefer the books so much more. And I know the books too much. So I just can see a lot of places he didn't get things right or moved it a little bit too far from the source. But overall, I have no problem with adult comic book kind of narrative. I guess it depends on what it's being done for. And uh, yes, Zack's style is, it has its extremities. But I think overall here, and not just with him and his fans, but even people who work for the other side, uh, there's a lot here to go through. And I do think it's worth at least people's time. So if you're on the fence, I, I would say just give it a chance. Uh, it may not convince you to be a complete Zack Snyder fan, but I do think a lot of the mythologies about Zack being super uber dark or not having anything but gritty pessimism is really not warranted if you look at the film carefully all right this has been pop cult analyze on the mythology of dark Zack snyder thanks for listening